fringe and it's cut, I'll cut my fringe a little bit too short. Hello Facebook, welcome to another show of Let's Talk About Ice. Um, just waiting for a few people to, um, to come on board and chat with us, say hello if you're here. Um, we're crossing live today from Cairns, well, Farm of Queensland. Where are we? We're in Cairns? Palm Cove. Palm Cove, thank you. <laughs> Guys, we're in Palm Cove, but we've been going, we've been around to Innisvale, we've been to Cairns, we've been all, all throughout Farm of Queensland here. Um, so it's been a really um, full on few days and we are about to, um, to launch the schools program again, um, once again in the, in the Tablelands area and um, throughout Mariba. Uh, we'll be doing some parent and um, parent and student information nights in the evenings on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at a couple of schools. Um, but we are educating kids about the dangers um, of the drug ice and other drugs of course. So. Um, we're really, really excited. We've got a few amazing presenters, and I've got a really special guest that I will introduce in a little while. I know they kind, of, kind of, they kind of sit beside me, going, "What's going on?" But guys, I just want to do a big shout out. A couple of people, um, Cole and the Combined Rotary Clubs uh, of Cairns, they've been instrumental in, um, in, in uh, I guess, getting us into the schools and, and um, making it all happen up here. We're also planning the Walk Against Ice on the 15th of September. Um, thanks to the Rotaries, the Rotary Clubs um, are coming together to, to put this event on. It is an awareness event. It is uh, about saying no to this drug, not even once. And we're standing together as a community um, against against the dangers of this drug. So not only are we doing education, we're helping people create pathways out of addiction into recovery, but we're, we're coming together on the 15th of September. Make sure you pencil that in. We have put it up, um, the registration up on our Facebook page, um, but we'll be doing a lot more promoting of that on the radio stations. So thank you to Cole and the Combined Rotary Clubs of Cairns, to Sam Joe um, uh, from the Rotary Club of Innisvale Fitzgerald. Um, we've, we've been able to um, have some lunch and coffee with them um, over the last few days and um, get everything organised for the walk. Um, thank you to Debbie from the Cairns Chamber of Commerce. Um, they're also joining us. Um, Murray, Dave and Inca from Star FM who, uh, and 4CA who are going to be our official sponsors for the Walk Against Ice and we're really excited for that. Um, thank you to Greg from Cairns FM, Alan Glenn from NQ Radio, Channel 7, um, if you haven't seen the, uh, the, the TV, Win TV and Channel 7, we've, we've been doing some, uh, so, uh, I guess, talking to people about um, what we're actually doing here and what our plan is and why lived experience education matters and um, how what we do has a huge amount of success and we're here to educate the next generation and warn them about the dangers of ice and other drugs. And I just want to say a huge thank you to Lisa from Atherton Rotary. Um, to Nina from Mariba Rotary and Andrew and Graham from Handsome Ford in Mariba Toyota. Um, they have been amazing um, in providing some necessary funds to be able to um, give us some resources to go into the schools. So guys, thank you so, so much. I know it sounds like I've gone through a big list, but um, all of these people have been instrumental in helping educate the community up here and put on the, um, the walk against ice and um, and. and allowing us to be able to come in and train some people on the ground here um, to leave something sustainable in, in the community here in front of Queensland so that you can have people on the ground who have had lived experience, they're trained and they, they actually come in and help people who are in addiction create pathways into recovery but most importantly um, warn our kids yeah because if they don't know what ice looks like um, how it's taken, what it's actually going to do to them long term, um, you know, they're, they're in for big trouble because it's on our street and it's being offered to our kids, um, you know, kids as young as eight up here I've uh, heard um, are using ice, you know, it's two, three generations deep. Um, we want to stop that. Um, we've been connecting with the police and local service providers and, um, you know, we're, we're here to, to do some work. So we're really excited to be able to be of impact, guys. Um, so yeah, let's get on with the show. We have um, a, an amazing story I've heard. I haven't heard her story yet, but I want to introduce you um, to the show. And um, this is Pauline sitting beside me. Pauline, welcome. Hi, thank you. And Pauline is joining us on the couch tonight um, live. So if you have any questions, um, you want to know anything, please type them out. We'll, we'll do our best to answer them after the show. Um, and Pauline has been 
amazing in coming here on the show tonight in the hometown um, to share her story because you know how hard is that we our story people can learn from our story people can learn um, that this is the path that you go on um, when you decide say yes to you know to this drug ice um, and, and it's destructive and, and it stills kills everything in your life you know there's nothing positive about it so Pauline um, has agreed not only to come on the show but to join us in the fight against ice and be part of our family yeah, and excited. our team here yeah. we're really excited to have you on board because yeah. we know that you know your story and your heart is huge and it's going to really help uh, a lot of people uh, yeah. understand the dangers of this drug ice so welcome thank to you. the show and welcome to the family thank you um and as we see here guys um we, we do have Pauline's daughter here supporting her mum and that is incredible and that's touching yeah. because you know the biggest thing about ice addiction you know people that are on ice lose contact with their family you know with with their, their friends people around them that love them and a lot of times there can be so much damage done you know to families mm -hmm. who lose contact with um you know and hurt a lot of people along the way so um you know to have your daughter here um and to be able to rebuild that yeah. relationship and to have her support here while you're in recovery is um and, and sharing this is yeah. just phenomenal yeah so um well awesome <laughs> good work being here yeah. and helping your mom she's a beautiful soul so mom. yeah <laughs> that's awesome that's beautiful pauline you know i want to get comfy on the couch with you yeah. and you know, I know it's a little bit nerve-wracking um, sharing your story, opening up, and, and it's a big deal, guys, you know, going in there and reliving the memories um, and just having to face again and again some of the things that you've done um, and where, where you've been. And, you know, nobody wants to hang their dirty laundry out, you know, in public. But, you know, we do this in hope that we can affect the next person Definitely watching. the problem's so serious that yep. we all need to start you know, facing up and, and trying to get it out there. That's the awesome. Right now. Um, can you guys hear us okay? Can you please just check that the sound is all good? Because we don't have our professional cameraman, Brad, um, because we're not in the home office, but I hope everything's okay with the sound. Can you give me a thumbs up if the sounds are good? Wait for feedback. Anyone? <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Just want to make sure you can hear it. She's got a gentle voice. Um, so, yeah, if we could speak up a little okay. bit. Um, Pauline, tell me, um, like I look at you now, and I know you're in early recovery, yep. um, but I look at you now and, and I wouldn't pick it, right? And A lot of people have said that even when I was in rehab, that they didn't pick it. Yeah. And but that's the thing, though. You, you, you don't know this drug until it's, until it's too late. Yep, yeah. yep, that's right. And most people can't tell. Um, some people cover it better than others, yeah. And, I mean, for the people at home, there's a lot of families watching and they're going, you know, well, how do I tell? Mm -hmm. How do you tell? Um, what are some of the signs that m maybe families might look out for or people, at, you know, in their workplace might mm -hmm. think, oh, maybe that person might be in trouble, yeah? Not mm -hmm. to condemn them, but because to, to, to reach out and maybe you might be able to, you know, link them up to us or, or to a service that can help them, yeah? yeah. Um, so, what? Well, what do you think would be some of the telltales like? Um, I think when your life just becomes unmanageable yeah. um, and everything on a daily basis is just way too hard, um, that's the biggest sign that I, I could probably say is just um, on the family front when things are just way too hard. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes there's a lot of domestic violence that goes along with it. Yeah. Um, but like I said, a lot of people can, can cover it up quite well for a very, very long time. So what does an un unmanageable look like? like? What do you mean? Like they're not... Um, going to work, like yeah. what does it look like? Yeah, eventually, you know, um, you're not going to work. Um, eventually, you know, because you're not able to regulate your own emotions. Um, I found that um, being a mum was, was really hard. Yep. Um, because kids are kids, are kids, you know, they're emotional train wrecks at the best of times. Yeah. Um, and dealing with, with that's really hard when you're unstable yep. yourself. Yeah. Um, being in a relationship is, 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 is really hard when you're, when you're using. Yep. Um, it's, it can turn volatile. I think it almost 100% does. Almost does, yeah. Yeah, um, and that's that's really really dangerous. So, do you think that there's some um, physical um, things that people can look out for, family members can look out for, um, or I think uh, with being withdrawn from your family. Yep. Um, not going to you know family functions. Yep. Definitely. Yep. Um, you know, not answering the phone calls. 
lies, like little lies that don't add up. I think um, you know, if, if you're thinking that a person in families, you know, things just don't quite up, add up or they're a little bit shifty, well, there's, they just probably are. Something, yeah, something not going. right. Yeah. And if you're suspecting, um, you know, we do encourage you um, to get on our webpage. There mm -hmm. is a, 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 a training, a two hour training you can do online. It's called Sammy Brief, yeah? Um, and it's a substance abuse and mental health intervention. Um, if you're suspecting that you might have a loved one that you know may be using, check out some of the signs and symptoms on our webpage as well. You might want to look for um, you know erratic behaviour, um, in a spiral in emotion. Um, maybe they're not sleeping. They might be losing a lot of weight or putting a lot of weight on because it can go either way, guys. Um, you know, you might, they might be uh, not turning up to work or go missing for a long periods of time yeah. and hot sweats and there's a lot of signs that you know you might be able to look out for mm -hmm. um, but definitely all the ones that you mentioned yep. um, definitely you know ones that are more apparent earlier on mm -hmm. if you've got your eyes open yeah yep. um, and, and it's always good you know if you're able to do the semi brief you can actually um, learn how to have that conversation with somebody that might be in addiction um, and, and you can do a cost versus the benefit so maybe speak mm -hmm. to them about you know why you know what they're losing from from using and what the life you know what, what their life looks like right now how to actually put that forward to them yeah um there is a specific way to do that you know mm -hmm. usually when you're using and I, i'd say you were the same when you're using you don't have a problem you don't think you have a problem yeah. and you know you're trying to master it as much yeah. as you can so Casey, i mean you got Oh, sorry, Pauline, I'm going Casey over there. Yeah. Look at it, Casey. Um, Pauline, sorry. Um, you got a daughter? Yeah, and I've, I've got two daughters. Two and daughters. Son. Okay. Yeah. When did your drug habit start? Like, what, mm -hmm. you know, when did you first start using drugs? And, and I, I'm more interested about what was going on here. Mm -hmm. um, okay. When you first started using or dabbling in drugs, and what were you thinking? Um, well, as you know, everyone's journey is very, very different and the reason why people pick up are very, very different. Yeah. For myself personally, um, I was 18 years old, um, my eldest angel was six months old. Mm -hmm. I had actually lost her dad and he was killed when I was um, pregnant. Wow. So I went through a lot of grief and loss. I uh, didn't think about drugs or anything like that when I was pregnant um, or straight after I had her. And then still was really not dealing with things. Um, I believe I was a good mum though, um, but not dealing with um, the loss, yeah. um, sudden death like that, um, in such a horrific way. Yeah. Um, and I was around some some friends, and you know they said, well, why don't we? Uh, why don't you give speed a try? And I was very, you know, didn't want to, but did. And once I did try speed, because back then it was speed, yeah. um, then it made me feel just very numb to my emotions. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I dabbled in speed on and off for quite a few years, yeah. um, but I believe I held my life together at stages and not, and you know, just in and out of it. Yeah. Um, and then I had a, a quite a big period of, of being clean myself off speed, um, but then over the years, um, what I learned for myself, and then quite a few years later it's become ice, was every time, because I went through such a huge trauma at a very young age, because um, I was only 17 when it happened, um, and then I used, I never fully learnt to regulate my emotions yeah. um, and that was just a failure for everything, like everything in my life. I was um, just anxious all the time, self-doubt. Um, I feel like I do have a really big heart and a lot to give but when I express myself or talk to people they just kind of, I felt, felt really misunderstood. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, when it became to ice and I used ice that was just a totally different effect altogether again not only did i um because speed was cheaper yeah. to be able to manage back then when it become ice um it's just effectual on so many different levels and it's such a horrible horrible drug and what it does to your brain and it took away all of those feelings as well as my emotional um stability financial stability yeah. everything yeah. and my life just spiraled we often hear that, you know, um, I was, you know, dabbling in this drug and that yep. drug, um, and then and then I hit ice, and it was like a brick wall, yeah, you know, fully. and and it really absolutely destroys people yep. straight up, like it just yep. grips you and it takes you to mm -hmm. hell. Um, how long were you using um, speed and other drugs, you know, recreationally mm -hmm. or trying, you know, 
when you while you were using before, like was that years or yeah, a couple yeah, of years, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then and then how long before you realised that ice um, you had a problem with ice? Um, with ice, I think it was pretty much probably after the first or second mix. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm lucky enough, I, I've been able to stop throughout my pregnancy. I never used yeah. misoprene or anything like that. Um, and, but like I said, as soon as, um, so there's been patches in my life where I've been happy in my, in my life. Yeah. And I found I wasn't using, or wasn't yeah. using as much. Yeah. Um, but as soon as something would happen, that would be my thing that I would go straight to. Yeah. So that's, it. yeah, what I learned about myself as soon as something's not going right, that's what I'll do. Yeah. And it's yeah. simply because I've never been able to regulate myself. I never wanted to, I guess. Yeah, well, you didn't, probably didn't know how. Yeah, and when, you know, you, know, you go through um, other hard things in life, as everyone does, yep. and you go through it straight, it's like, oh my God, I can't do this. Give me, I need to have something. Yep. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, handling your emotions, and um, and when you do have a big heart, especially, uh, you know, things happen in life, you're not really taught with a manual, no. you know, this is what you're supposed to do. And, and I, I find a lot of people, a lot of youth out there today, um, you know, you are using drugs to do that. Yeah. And um, to try to mask. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to feel, um, you know, I, I, it just made me numb. And, and one thing led to another, yeah. and then they hit ice, and it, it just mm -hmm. does to just destroy them. And what's know? confusing about the, the drug as well is I've used in periods where I've been happy. Yeah. So I've picked up and used, and then it creates all the problems that I had when I wasn't. So it just, it just, there's no limit. It. There's yeah. no limit. It. It's yeah. It's you, it, there's it's nothing devastating. good. There's nothing good. No, it's us. absolutely devastating. And you know what I've put my family through as well is, is devastating. So how long were you using? How long were you using ice if it's okay for us? Um, I would say on and off um, for. Uh, Probably eight to ten years. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Yeah. And tell me about that journey. What was that like? Um, you obviously had the kids, and yeah. um, I mean, I, I know I was in that world for two mm -hmm. years, like intensely. Yeah. I was doing ice every day, yeah. and I couldn't even function. I'd get lost around the corner from my house. How were you functioning? Yeah. So I guess the, the last couple of years, when it's been really, really full on daily use. Yeah is when everything has spiraled really out of control. There's been lots of times when um, my mum um, has taken the kids yeah. to their own safe environments. So they went around domestic violence because I had a lot of that happening. Yeah. Um, you know, no food in the house, yeah. um, even though it's, it's a really hard thing to talk about because um, I love my kids with all my heart. Yeah. But at the same time, I would go and spend every cent I had and have no food for them. Yeah. You know, so that's a really hard thing for my family to grasp as well. It is a hard place to be, Pauline, because um, you, when you're in addiction, guys, um, you know, it's, you need ice like you need air, mm. okay? And you'll do whatever it takes, because the frontal lobe of your brain is hijacked um, by ice, and that's where your logic, rational decisions take place. And if you can't process, you're operating from your midbrain, and that's your animal brain, and your animal brain will do whatever it needs to do mm. to get the next five minutes of pleasure even if it means hurting the people around yep. you that love you and that you love. Yep. Because you're not able to connect your emotions and your processing centre, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, you're just operating on <coughs> your need to survive and to get out of that downward spiral of anxiety, psychosis, paranoia, um, you know, and it all comes together with the chemical imbalance in your brain of the lack of serotonin um, and dopamine, and it just feels horrific. And, mm -hmm. it, you know, you just need to get out of it. So you just, like, what need to pick up. And you'll do whatever it takes, you know, like you're saying, even yeah. not feed your kids, even some forget them, um, you know, you know, get lock yourself up in a place and leave your kids in another state, which is what I did. You know, yeah. people do these things. It's not because, you know, they, they, they want to hurt their kids. They just can't process or feel or mm -hmm. think, right? Yeah. And, you know, I've been very, very lucky with the parents I have that um, they've stepped in at the times they did. You know, at the times when they, when they did take the kids, I was very angry and volatile mm -hmm. at times. But at the end of the day, they did what was best yeah. for my kids. How did you handle that? Like, I know that a lot of families out there, um, you know, have taken their kids and, um, you know, the, 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 their loved one that's in addiction, like, they get violent and they, um, mm -hmm. you know, they, they want to steal them back and, you know, there's all domestic violence issues. How did you... Well, I knew in my heart that my 
kids were best um, and safest with my parents. Yeah. And the thing with my mum and dad is um, I had asked my mum lots of different times for money and I'd try and make up stories and lie to her and all the rest of it. And very rarely would she ever actually hand over cash, yep. but she would buy food yep. and things like that. So she wasn't silly. She knew what was going on, but yep. also didn't really know what to do. So she didn't enable you. And let me ask you something right now, um, and it's okay to be honest. Mm -hmm. Do you think the fact that she didn't enable you and give you what you needed helped you, um, you know, make a decision mm. to get out of that yep. space? Yeah, they've definitely yep. made me do some hard, you know, hard yards yep. to, to get to where I am. And also with um, the kids, like when they've taken them, um, mum always would let me talk to them on the phone. Yep. Um, she met me at the park a couple of times. Yep. Um, and she also got me to sign a piece of paper um, and had it signed by JP just to say that she would have them until I got better. Yep. And I, at that stage, I think I was having some psychosis and I just thought mum's just trying to take my kids off me and yep. I'm starting to freak out. And I really had those feelings for a long, for quite a few months, but she stuck to her word. Yep. As, yep. As, you know, as soon as I got the help I needed to, they were, they were giving back to me. That's awesome. And I think it was only really because of mum and dad um, that I never had child safety and things like that involved. Yeah. Yep. And I've also been linked up to um, Reba Community Centre mm -hmm. for over a year, yep. voluntarily. How did they help? Um, so I had um, a support worker visit me weekly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would dodge her phone calls or lock the house up pretend I wasn't home and all sorts of things. Um, and she just stuck with me and there's been times when I've, you know, lied to her about my using, but deep down she knew what was going on. Yeah. Um, and she just showed me nothing but love and support yeah. and, um, you know, we're always just want to know where I'm at and go around things not as in a completely direct manner. Yeah. Um, and she helped me out a lot with domestic violence and the situation I was in. Yeah. Um, and she, yeah, they supported me throughout my rehab and they actually, while I was in rehab, they supported my mum, so they'd visit mum on a weekly basis and see if she needed anything. That's awesome. Yeah. That's all, and that's Marie, but um, community centre. Yeah, so no, yeah. But I didn't have a car at most stages, as yeah. you know, because you don't have any luxury. Because you hock it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or smash it. You smash it, or yeah, someone yeah. smashes yeah. it, or something. Something disaster. So, yeah, you know, you're good. <laughs> everywhere. Um, so they would take me to appointments or pick the kids up for me. Yep. Um, numerous times, give me food vouchers. Yeah. Um, like that, yeah. That's awesome that yeah. you had that support, yeah. and really, guys, that's what we're talking about mm -hmm. when we talk about our buddy system. Um, you know, when you've been through that and you have an understanding um, of not enabling but being able to walk beside somebody mm -hmm. from a place of love, okay, and understanding and compassion, and saying, Hey, don't like what you're doing, but I love you, and yeah. when you're ready to change, I don't want to see you hungry, and I don't want to see you hurting, mm -hmm. and here's your kids. Like what your mum was doing is going, here's your kids, yeah. and you can have them back when you get better. Yeah. yeah. And so that would have been a carrot for you. And you know, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And you know, they, they've put up with a lot of stuff. And so have my brothers, you know, I've lost numerous rentals. Um, they've had to pick up the pieces and go and try and get my furniture for locks they've changed on houses. Um, they've seen me stay in a relationship that was that was violent, um, that they weren't happy about, but I wouldn't leave. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, one thing I have to give them all is, even on, at times when my brothers wouldn't directly have anything to do with me, they were always there for my kids. That's always. Awesome. Yeah. And so they were there, but not in your life yeah. because you can't get in the yeah. life of your addict. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can't live it with them. You can't be part of it. Don't be driving around three hours in the morning, you're picking them up and mm -hmm. you know running around. You can't be in their life. You can be there for them. Mm -hmm. I love you, don't love what you're doing. I didn't choose that. You chose that yeah. life, yeah? And when you're ready to come out, we're here to help you. Because there's yeah. so many people affected. Like, that's my brothers. I'm yep. affected um, their partners, my nieces, my nephews. Yeah. Um, so did they cut ties with you at the time? Eventually. When things got a bit crazy? Yeah. 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 And so... But how and partly that was my fault as well, because uh, yep. before it got um, really hectic with domestic violence and... Um, you know, the things I was doing, assaulting people and stuff, um, I was withdrawing from them yeah. because even though I tell myself I'm okay, yeah. I'm still deeply ashamed of what I was doing. So yeah. as long as I was hiding it, which meant not being around them, yeah. it's just a, it's a terrible so cycle yeah. until you're ready to break it. Yeah. And that's what happens, guys, with a lot of people um, that are using. You will isolate. You will, yeah. um, you know, go away from your family. It, you know, it's deep inside, you know. But you'll blame them. Yeah, of course. But deep inside, you'll blame you know. someone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
it's all your fault and yeah. you know, if you just leave me alone, yeah. it'll all, all be okay. But that's not really deep inside, you know, yeah. you're going through a lot of pain and a lot of shame and a lot of guilt, yeah. um, but you don't know how to get out. And it's, it's really hard to uh, understand that because your brain's not operating, but you know, in, in, you're in this lost world and a lost space um, through that time. Um, but it's amazing that your family stuck out with you and they... they they're all slowly coming out. back to me. It's awesome. Yeah. Recreating the, yeah. the bonds and the relationship, the trust again. Yes, yes. the trust is a big thing. Yeah. Trust, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, um, I bet you they're amazingly proud of yeah. what you're stepping into now. Yeah. You know, and there's still a couple that I, a couple of family members I haven't spoken to directly for quite quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, now that I've completed rehab and definitely on the right track, I'd like to just give them a little bit of time to adjust. Yeah. To to the new you, yeah. to the real you. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, you definitely. know, because that's the our, old me. Yeah. We mask. Yeah. You know, we use mask, and and we've been somebody. Um, it's not who we are, but it's what happened, and and we become the the drug takes over, mm -hmm. and you become somebody that you. You know, you're not. That's not really who you are. Yeah. Um. But now the real you is come back. You yeah. Know, and and you recreate. You, you know, you give yourself a space where you can go. No, that that's not who I want to be. I don't yeah. want to go down that path. And we were talking about that before. I don't want to live that life anymore. Um. I want to. You know. I want something else. I want. I want yeah. a family. I want. I want a loving environment. You know. I want a future. Um, for my kids and for and for yourself. Yeah, definitely. Because you're worth it. Yeah, thank yeah, you. And that's awesome. That yeah. It's amazing that you've been able to, in a short time really, to uh, re-establish um, that yeah. and, and have your kids back. I think I'd made the decision um, quite some time before I went to rehab mm. that I wanted to go to rehab and it was just um, getting the mindset to actually to walk in those gates. Yeah. And um, so I packed up my house and my mum had the kids organised all that stuff. And they couldn't have been happier to see me go to rehab. Yeah. That's awesome. So did you do rehab locally or? Yeah. 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 And what was the trigger for when you um, said enough's enough? But I've had enough. I know we, as users, you're always going, oh, I'm never going to do this again. When you're coming mm -hmm. down, it's horrific and you've got disaster and you've got you know, furniture breaking and all, yeah. this, all this stuff going on. Yeah. Um, and you're always never going to do it again, but then you do, right? Yeah. So what changed mm -hmm. for you? Um, well, to be honest, it was, um, around Christmas, what was Christmas time, um, and to be honest, I, you know, I haven't had very good Christmases for the last couple of years, and, um, I got out of Centrelink Lane to buy Christmas presents, but I didn't do that, did I? I spent a whole lot on, on drugs, and Christmas morning, my kids had virtually nothing, and from then, for a few weeks after that, I still kept using, and then I just decided, you know, I was looking at my kids and my life and I was on the brink of losing another rental and um, I had lost the plot and smashed up a chick's house with a tomahawk and, um, while she was home and all sorts of things were happening and I just went, it's just, it's just not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it anymore and I wanted a better life for my kids and, and myself and um, I think... It was a really, really hard thing to do to go to rehab. Yeah. Um, definitely, it's harder before it gets easier. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, and I, I can't stress to people enough that if you do seek help and it's not the right help for you, there's always something else out there. Yes, that's if right. If you've got a caseworker in a support group, whatever you're going to go on, yeah, you're, you're entitled change. to ask. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Same with rehabs. Yeah. You know, not every rehab is the right one for mm -hmm. you. You know, it's got, to, it's got to be the fit. And what we do at AARC, when people call up, um, and if I'm speaking to you right now, you'll know it, um, if you're ready for change and, and you're like, I've had enough of this life and mm -hmm. I want something better, it's out there for you. It, it is a little bit, you need to make a decision. And it mm -hmm. is, a, you know, jumping into that and, and having the resources and somebody there to support you. Yeah, and we are here to do that. Um, that's what we do. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a big deal making that, that transition, but we, because we work with a lot of rehabs and a lot of people, we kind of get to see, yeah, I don't think that rehab's going to be the right one mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. I recommend this one. Yeah, yeah. You, you're going to love it there. And so we can make that recommendation. Yeah. As long as there is beds available, I mean, I've flown people from WA to Melbourne yeah. to go into rehab because they wanted it yeah. and they got clean, you know, and yeah. it was the right rehab for them. Yeah. And some, and we've also worked with people that have been, oh, now I've gone into, re into this same rehab three times and it hasn't yeah. worked. 
Well, maybe that's not the right rehab for you. Yeah, I was very lucky to get into um, Oscar Rehab in Cairns. That's yeah. the one I did. Someone was definitely watching down on me. Um, I think I, I rang them every day yep. um, for like two weeks. Awesome. Um, and just got pretty much straight in. Yeah. That's awesome. So did you have to detox? No. Detox? No, yep. but I did. Yeah, yep, I did three did. weeks at home with yep. mum and dad before I went in. Awesome. Well, that's, that's amazing in itself yeah. that they had you there. I'm glad I did. Yeah. yeah. Because um, I just pretty much slept and yep. slept and ate. When, at I was going to ask, yeah. what was that detox like? Yeah, yeah. I didn't go to bed. Yep. And you know, there's been times throughout my addiction as well. Um, you know, as well as the high it gives you, when you are coming down, my gosh, like you can't get out of bed. Yeah. At all, unless you've got more. Let's talk about. Um, I, I I don't know much about your story. Um, I'm hearing about it now, like everybody else at home. Um. Did you go through psychosis and what was that like? Yeah, um, at the time if you'd asked me, I would have said I'm fine, there's nothing wrong with me, you yeah. already didn't. Yeah. Um, but as you look back now, uh, Casey and I were talking about this earlier today, um, about some of the strange things we've did, we've done and it's, it's yeah, definitely did, yeah. Can you go into there a little bit more? Um, some people at home can understand what we mean by psychosis, strange things and we're in psychosis. There's, Youth watching mm -hmm. today, you yeah. know, and they, they, they tap in and they want to hear, mm -hmm. you know. What's well, the, like. the strangest one of the strangest things that happened to me I'd been um, awake for about three weeks That's and awesome. I went to sleep um, and I woke up. And when I woke up, I had like total amnesia. I did not know the house I was in, wow. I didn't know where the toilet was, I didn't know I could see the kids, I didn't know whose kids they were. Wow. And that was for like three hours. Oh my goodness. And I was on autopilot and I was like trying to find something to feed these kids that I don't know who the hell owned. Wow. Um, it was the strangest thing I had ever been through. That's incredible. And that would have had to be psychosis. And yeah. That, that lasted hours. Yeah. And then it was just like a cloud lifted and then I was like, oh, okay, this is, this is who I am. You know that they have done some tests on the, the brain of youth mm -hmm. using ice six times mm -hmm. yeah and what it shows university actually did this and it shows brainwave patterns of that of early onsets of parkinson's yeah right so the the memory you know you you just nothing and i would say that, that might be you know what was going on there but psychosis absolutely you know that's a scary place to be yeah. you know um i can imagine just waking up and thinking where am i who are these mm -hmm. people you know and just not being able to come out of that mm -hmm. And you know, it's also it's not normal to be looking out the window, peering through a curtain for twelve hours straight. Yeah, yeah. Um, Does that sound like fun to you guys? Yeah. And this is some of the fun things that you get to do when you're mm. on ice, like you know, get yeah, run down and sick. Yeah. Yeah. Violence. Um, yeah. You know, depression, losing mm -hmm. your kids, losing your house, having no money, no food. Like, yeah. Does that sound like fun? And that's what it's not. We talk about, you know, it's it's just. It destroys life. Yeah. You know. So you you went through a little bit of psychosis, and um, that was probably one experience of probably many. Yeah. Um. And what about your health? Tell me about how ice affected your health. Um. Did you have any kidney issues or um, you know, immunity? Yeah, I was constantly muscle. sick all the time with the flu or a cough or a cold. Mm. Um, I suffered cold sores all the time. Mm. Um. My weight plummeted up and down. Yeah. Um, at times, because I hadn't eaten for so long, when I did eat, it hurt my mm. mouth to even eat. You know, you have to teach yourself how to eat again because you hadn't eaten for weeks or days. Um, yeah, not drinking any fluids, so you get um, your own infections. Yeah. 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 In and out. I, I don't know about you, but I was in and out yeah. of you know, infections. And I don't know how our human body lives yeah. when you're in addiction because no. we don't put anything into it that's healthy or good. And the, uh, I'm imagining what people out there that haven't been through it, they're probably going, yeah, but um, you've had all this, like, this horrible things happen to you. Mm -hmm. Why do we still keep using? Because you can't stop. That's, that's addiction. And, and that's what ice does to you. It's yeah. like no other drug, guys. Um, you, know, if, you know, there's other drugs that are addictive. Mm -hmm. The difference with ice is that it hijacks the frontal lobe and you don't know how to get out. You're entrapped in a hell, and it is a hell, and you don't know how to actually get out. It's like air, and, and you need somebody to step in with you. Yeah, I stand you. corrected. You can stop, yeah. but you need help. Yep. You yep. definitely yep. 
need help. Somebody else needs to be, I, I almost put it like, I'm going to be your brain while you can't think for yourself, mm -hmm. okay? And, and walk with you instead of trying to tell you what you should be doing yeah. with your life. But walk beside you mm -hmm. and, and, and say, you know, this is what we need to do because I've been there. And if you do that, you're going to get this. Mm -hmm. And one step at a time, one step at a time, you know? Yeah. And what's devastating about it is, you know, I'm still very early on my recovery, only five months. And yeah, thank you. I, um, and so even though I'm so happy have, with how far I've come, mm -hmm. the thoughts still pop into my mind, and that's how oh, strong and overpowering this this drug is. Yeah. Tell them about the dream. You had a dream of you woke up the other night. Oh yeah, um, using dreams are quite off, quite oh, yeah. um, normal when you're in recovery. I had them in, in rehab, and then the other night um, I had another one where I'd, I was dreaming I had used, and I actually woke up thinking, oh my god, am I? I woke up and I'm like, I'm straight, no, I haven't, I haven't had a shot, I haven't had a five, I'm straight, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Because I actually felt like I woke up with a few moments of terror, like, yes. am I relapsed? Yes, yeah, yeah. I hear you. And, and that doesn't go away, guys. Yeah, that's what's devastating. It, it just, it takes over so much yeah. that even when you're so happy with where you are, you're still fighting that demon in your mind. Yeah, yeah. and it is a demon, and it does, you know, once you've been there, um, it, you know, it's, you have uh, flashbacks, you have terrors, um, you know, you always, it always comes back to haunt you and yeah. you, you know, it's something like I've never experienced before and, you know, you don't wish that no. upon your worst enemy, it, 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 it haunts you down and you've just got to learn to fight it, you've got to learn to put it where it belongs yeah, and say, no, I hate you, you actually destroyed my life, yeah. I don't want nothing to do with you, you know, and I'm going to mm -hmm. actually do something to help somebody else not go Definitely. there because um, you know it is a horrific, mm -hmm. horrific drug. In the past, I think one of the things I've, I've done wrong when I've been trying to, to get off it is when I did get emotional about things that happened in the past, I would just clam up and, and try not to think about it. Whereas now, I actually give myself time to process it. Good. I have a cry, I go for a shower, and I get, I, I get it comes on like in a panic attack. Yes. Um, and that still happens quite regularly. Yeah. Um, and it's not panicky because I want to use it. I just get really panicky about my past and the people I've hurt and things I've done. Yeah. And, it, and it really hurts. And I've just got to go for a shower, have a cry, and let my body release. I'm glad you're sharing that part um, mm -hmm. of early recovery because a, a lot of people out there don't really understand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they might have a loved one in recovery yeah. early stages. And yeah. I've heard parents say, all right, you know, she's been clean for three weeks, she's got to go back to work. It's not quite no. like that, you know. and I'm really glad that you're sharing that part. We haven't done this on the show before um, yep. about early recovery. You know what happens, Pauline, it, um, what I've found anyway, speaking to a lot of people in recovery, is that the episode of that panic attack and those, those um, you know, reliving mm -hmm. moments and, you know, even that times where you can smell the gear and you can, you know, you can taste it, mm -hmm. they get further and further apart. Yeah. Um, you know, even though you can smell it, taste it, and think about it, you, you know, you don't have to go there because you know it's going to bring you. You know what it's going to give you. It never ends well. No, it doesn't. No. And the five minutes of, you know, oh yeah, I, I've got a hit, doesn't compensate for the no. devastation coming after that. Definitely not. So once you can put that into perspective and yep. keep yourself focused on what it's actually going to, the reality of what it's going to give you, yep. not the fantasy of what you think you're going to get. Yep. Um, and. and you know, it spaces out further and further apart. It does become easier, but you know, even five years in recovery, I've had night terrors yeah. about you know being raided. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can you know sometimes look at a picture and get triggered and have you know, um, you know a memory come in and where it brings me to my knees. Yeah, you know, it does. Yeah, exactly what you mean. You're always going to be fighting that. Yeah. But the good thing is. You know, with the AIC, we can actually use that for good. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we do, guys. We It's lived experience that makes all the difference mm -hmm. when we get out there and we, we share an evidence-based practice presentation, a workshop with the kids, um, but we actually get to integrate our own personal stories mm -hmm. and to be able to share some realities and answer questions that um, people generally don't go there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that the kids want to know, you know, real things. They want to know, yeah. you know, how did you get off? What was it like? Yeah. You know, well, as we spoke earlier, um, when I said to you, you know, for all people living in active addiction, you know, would you like your son or daughter to do the, live the same life you're living, or your niece or nephew, or your mother or father? Yeah. And if you can answer no, then it really is time to seek help. Yeah, yeah, and and that's really really valid because you got to go, you know. Is that is that what you want for your yeah. kids? Is that what you want? Um, and we're here to help you make that change. And mm -hmm. you know, we and it have feels great. 
It's awesome. Yeah. It does feel great. Yeah. And every day it does get better. Yeah. Um, and it gets easier and your life, you know, gets um, more amazing. You know, we're so grateful for... Um, yeah, for food. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gratitude just goes a yeah. long way. And yeah. for awesome people in our life and yeah. for seeing our kids um, and grandkids and, you know, yeah. um, moments that we get to share together, yeah. you know. Definitely. Um, it, it does, it gets better every day. So if we're speaking to you and you're contemplating change and maybe somebody sent you this clip... Um, so you can watch um, our show and you might be in addition, you might be thinking, hey, I've had enough. Or maybe I might want to talk to somebody. Um, I might have an issue, yeah, my life's falling apart or, you know, it's not really um, benefiting me anymore. And you, you're thinking about change, please give us a call because that's, that's what we want to do. We want to help you. We want to make, help you make that transition into recovery. And recovery for everybody's, um, you know, always different you know it yeah. might be a different rehab it might be a community rehab it might be a living rehab it might be where you have your work and still see an AOD counselor every, every person's different mm -hmm. um, I know I certainly uh, I didn't get the opportunity to go into rehab and it was hard yakka you know I did community rehab mm -hmm. where I had a counselor and I had a buddy um, at, but it was hard you know, and I, I almost suicided. It was that hard. It, I, mm -hmm. I, I hear and speak to people going through rehab and I go, oh man, that was so much better. Than, you know, at least you had everything there. You had all the resources. You had yep. the people there to help you, you know, um, and they've already done it and they've got the sessions you know, blocked out for you to make it easier for you to step in. And you're just concentrating on your recovery. You haven't yep. got anything else. Yeah. Life. So, yeah. Life happening outside. Yeah, I couldn't imagine doing it yeah. um, on my own. I don't think either way in rehab, yeah, but it must be really hard. So if you're um, contemplating change, um, you know, sometimes rehab looks scary, but that's not the only way that you mm -hmm. can recover. I really urge you to pick up the phone. Um, give us a call. Uh, we're there from 10 till about six every day um, and we have a, a, a message that you can leave um, you can leave a message if we're not there and we'll get straight back to you that number to call is 1-800-NO-TO-ICE 1-800-N-O-T-O-I-C-E or you can call us at head office on 07 5665 um, and leave a message or um, speak to somebody or private message us. We're always online. We have our um, our care team who are always online. We're always online answering. Um, so Pauline will be online after the show. We'll tag her in and she'll get to answer any of your questions. So if you have questions for Pauline, please ask them. Um, and share this video on your Facebook, guys, because you don't know who around you, um, out of your friends and, and family. Sometimes people suffer um, through this journey quietly. They get ashamed. Um, they don't want to talk about it, but you know, by watching this, they might something might trigger where they will reach out for help. Um, so please share this on your page because you don't know whose life you can change by sharing sharing these stories. We have a, a YouTube channel very active with all different stories. So maybe Pauline's story might not um, relate to you, but maybe um, you know somebody else's a male story or a young a guy or an older person or, or might relate to you in a different way um, or your loved one, um, I just encourage you to share. Okay, share the message. Um, our message is not even once. Don't go there. It's not worth it. It's, it destroys you and it destroys your life, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm, I feel really blessed that you're here and that you've made that positive um, turn in mm -hmm. your life, not only for yourself, but for your family as well. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. have you got a, a type of system of support around you yes. now? Okay. Yeah. And how does it look like? Um, so at the moment, I'm still keeping contact with um, the rehab centre weekly. Great. Um, I'm still in contact with Marita Community Centre. Great. Marita Community Care. Yep. Um, so I see um, Deb from there every week. Yep. Um, and now I'm linked up with you guys, which is great. Awesome. Um, and, I, and I'm doing DV counselling. The yep. kids are doing DV counselling. Fantastic. Um, and just doing heaps of stuff with, with the kids as well, just being active in their life. Good. Um, so and it's about being present, um, yeah. being present in the moment, being present with the opportunity that you've been gifted. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a gift, um, recovery. You know, a very small percentage of people um, who embark in ice addiction actually come out the other Yeah, that's what's... That's what shocked me. Yeah, yeah. Very small. Um, a lot of people relapsing and, and not being able to get out. It's almost like you're drowning. You kind of yeah. think, 
a, a pet and, mm -hmm. um, and you can't get out. So it, we're very, very blessed to be able to have this opportunity of Definitely. called life, you yep. know, and then to be able to do it together, yep. you know, and, and be of impact um, here in your community. Yep. So I look forward to working with you and training yeah, you to get you to that point where... And um, something shifts, I think, when you become very, very honest yep. and live life on life's terms, something shifts and um, it just makes you feel um, you know, grateful for every single day that you have. And yeah. once you're honest with yourself and everyone around you... Um, the feeling that, that you'll get is, is just astronomical and it's so worth it. That's awesome. Um, I'm really excited to hear, maybe in five months, bring you back on the show yeah. and have, you know, hear how things are going and progressing yeah. for you. Um, yeah. You've got an amazing team of people around you. I know, you know, Casey's done an amazing job with her recovery and, yeah. um, you know, your daughter's here, your, your parents are there. And yeah, my parents are number one. Yeah, yeah. and I think, you know, having that um, support is a mm. huge part of um you know of recovery as well you can't do it alone no no, no you can't so i want to go back for a minute just quickly mm -hmm. what um do you think is the worst thing about being in ice like stepping into ice addiction um i think it's the emotional turmoil and i know for me um it was seeing disappointment all the time on the kids faces Mm -hmm. okay. um, with going without yep. um, and even um, if you're doing okay financially you're you're there but you're not actually present in mind and soul were you present at the time when you're not present uh, did you know that you weren't being present with your kids kind and, of yeah. yeah yeah and you know the things that I um, I love now is you know you'd be playing with your kids and just get into this big huge belly laughs and mm -hmm. Um, everything's fun and games and you're always scaring each other and always helping Angela out and driving her places and stuff and when you're in active addiction um, none of those fun things happen anymore yeah and you, and you realize you know when was the last time you had a good old laugh yeah. or, or played with your kids you know laid down the floor and read a book or yeah. um, you know because you're when you're in active addiction you're always too busy for that mm -hmm. busy achieving nothing that's right it's chasing that chasing yeah. that drug and it becomes everything um, and the reason what, what happens inside guys is in your brain um, the dopamine supply um, the transporters and receptors that produce dopamine now dopamine makes us feel good happy um, and, and you know when something amazing happens like you feel like oh man I was on top I was on cloud nine that's your dopamine floating in your brain so when you first use ice your brain gets flooded with dopamine mm -hmm. so yeah you're going to feel the highest high you're ever going to feel um you know you're going to feel amazing for a sec yeah and and you know it might maybe the second time it's not so high but you know you still out good you know the dopamine was flooding mm -hmm. your brain um you know, and very very quickly uh the transporters and receptors stop producing dopamine and when you don't have that feel good chemical um, they get blocked, they recede back and um, we have a great video in our workshop presentation where we were able to, to show that um, to, to people in the workshop and they kind of go, oh I understand why the depression, I understand why the downward spiral because mm -hmm. you're not feeling good. But what else happens in there is that the serotonin levels um, are depleted and now that sparks up anger, violence, mm -hmm. um, anxiety. So, you know, with, with the psychosis, lack of sleep, mm -hmm. depression, anxiety, anger, you have time bomb waiting to happen. Yep. Frontal lobe not working. So, you know, to get out of that, every time you're coming down, it gets worse. So you kind of go, well, I've got to pick up again because it doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got to get out of that space. So that's what actually is going on in your brain. Yeah. And you know what? It takes about 12 to 18 months for the chemical balance to be back to normal yeah you know and that's the difference between ice and every other drug mm -hmm. um you know detox from heroin and alcohol you know is eight ten twelve days um ice is um you know 12 to 18 months for that chemical balance yeah. to restore for your brain to start spurting yeah. out the proper balance um and a lot of people were using uh you know antidepressants and um you know to try and regain that dopamine to yep. start working again but the best way we found and, and our dual diagnosis trainer which you'll get to go and mm -hmm. do some training with george he's amazing um he, by the way there's dual diagnosis training on our web page if you want to do it it's a two-day intensive um, workshop but it um, you can do it online as well um, what he speaks about is optimal health 
and in early recovery it's so so important to make sure that um, you're putting in mm -hmm. into your body all the stuff that you you know to help support yeah. um, you know your, your brain function and your physical function as well because that's going to help you stabilize your emotions okay yeah. so that what that might look like is um, some vital greens Mm -hmm. Double strength quill oil, yeah, yeah, to help the the, the brain, um, you know, repair the damage, yeah, yeah? and then speed up, um, and getting plenty of sun, um, doing stuff that makes you that you would have before felt happy about yeah. doing, like Definitely. walking on the beach, like laughing with your kids, yeah. you know, and really immersing yourself in in the moment and yeah. gratefulness, you yeah. know. It's really, really important to early recovery and that putting in the mm -hmm. veggies and the vitamins and yeah. eating and sleeping, like, yeah. oh, Getting man, I love my sleep till yeah. today. <laughs> yeah. Now, when you haven't had it, yeah, you know, when you have it, it's like you get so grateful for yeah. it. Yeah. So if you were talking to families out there, which you are, mm -hmm. um, what would be your advice to some family members? Um, we have loved ones. We have a lot of people that have loved ones in addiction. Um, I was uh, talking back on some posts today mm -hmm. um, and hearing some of the heartbreaking stories that the families mm -hmm. are going through. Um, and in particular, like, I can't do anything. I've lost my son. He's dead. He's dead. Um, I'm just waiting to bury him. Mm -hmm. You know, those kind of things. You know, what would you say to those families out there, like, your mum, mm -hmm. and if that was happening to you, you know, how do you have any advice or anything that you you would say to these families? I think the biggest thing is just don't give up on them. Yeah. Don't give up on them and don't lose faith in them. Um, and also, if if you've got the chance to to spend some time with them, try not to maybe attack them for the fact that they are a drug addict or using or spending all their money or whatever. Maybe try and get to the root of the problem. Like, I like, how are you? What's going on? Like, mm -hmm. how are you feeling? Yeah. Um, are you coping with the kids? Do you want a break? Yeah. Um, yeah. Things like that. Um, I think, and even though it's it's really hard to show someone um, love that that's hurting you so much, um, you have to find your heart somewhere to mm -hmm. show them some love and, and guidance. Otherwise, um, I think that people who are, are in living in active addiction. Um, who can't get any love or connection from anywhere in their family, even though they're the ones pushing them away or back and forth. Family members can just fight through that and, and try their best to be there for them in some way. Yeah. Um, it's probably the best. Yeah, that's and then okay. when you can get through one layer of, of and, you know, eventually talk to them about why they're using yeah. um, and get through that barrier, is then I think when you can probably try and organise and seek help together. That's it. Yeah. That's it. We often, um, you know, we have lived experience um, family members who, you know, become trained um, through Optimal Health and, and mm -hmm. through our other trainers to help other families through um, through through that time, because it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy to watch your child um, put poison in and mm -hmm. in in them and self destruct. I mean, we're, we we have kids and we're watching our kid, um, you know, destroy their life and you know disappear, you know, emotionally disappear, disconnect um, and, and lose everything that you've just grown them up to have and the best, you know, and, and you love them. So, you know, we have um, peer family support people um, that help other families out there with some tools maybe, stuff that they, they might have done that didn't work, um, things that they might have done that work that might help you. Um, you know, it's good to have like the shoulder to cry on. You might have family members and people around you that um, might help the family members. Um, but there's nothing like having tools. Yeah, and um, we have some books that you know you might be able to uh, get some advice from people that have been there. And um, you know, and that's that's you know part of what AARC do. So if you're a family member and, and you're struggling, you're not alone. Yeah, we want to offer some support. Um, and the number to call is 1-800-NO-TO-ICE, 1-800-N-O-T-O-I-C-E. Or private message us and our care team will get back to you and hook you up with, um, with the right family support person in your area, of, in your community, um, to be able to walk with you and, and offer what has worked for them and not, not worked for mm -hmm. them. So 
um, and, and to be able to help your loved one to a point where um, you know they're ready to step into recovery. We can't make people want to no. step into recovery. Um, you know, and if if you if your family me members sat there and went, Pauline, you know, you got to stop using, you know, and and you know you're doing the wrong thing, and um, you know we 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 just don't want you around because you're using. We just don't approve of you. You know, I, I don't know about you, but um, I certainly it would have pushed me further yeah. away. So you know, I find that the best thing is to go. This is what you're looking like and this is what your life's looking mm -hmm. like and this is what you're losing by using mm -hmm. I love you yeah, whether that's... you use or not you know and but if you know this is what you had and this is what you can have and it's mm -hmm. cost versus benefits um, and just be ready to catch them you know yeah you know? it's a very real and very serious problem that's happening yeah yeah and um, I think that the more we can be open and honest about it um, we've, we've got a chance yeah, yeah, and guys, up here in Far North Queensland, um, in Mariba, is that right, Glenn? We're we're going to be having the family information mm -hmm. nights as well, um, at a couple of the schools in Mariba. If you want to find out where that is going to be, um, please private message us. We'll be able to give you that information. I haven't got it at hand. I'm really, really sorry. Um, but you know, if you're from that area, you may be able to attend. Um, and if, if you know, if you've got kids in schools. Um, in far north Queensland area, please, you know, get on the schools back. You know, your kids are at risk. You know, that's the truth. There are kids as young as eight using ice up here. Um, and it's a problem all over Australia. It's not just here. Um, and we want to get in front of them. We want to warn them. We want to protect them from our own personal lived experience. We mm -hmm. want to be able to share the in depth of ice world and what it does. And you know, we talk about that. What, what ice is made out of, the chemicals um, in the dirty lab that it's made out of, you know, there's Drano mm. in ice, um, you know, there's uh, acetone, like nail polish remover, in ice. Um, this is some of the chemicals, you know, you think methamphetamine, it, you know, it's a synthetic drug, it's cooked in a lab, you know, no, forget it. It's cooked mm. in a dirty hotel room or backyard shed, um, and it's, and it's, Disgusting. Some of this stuff in there. You know, they even put glass in there. Um, you know, to <coughs> fill it, where it's it's tearing up your insides. You know, yeah. Cutting ecstasy tablets with it's ice. It's just getting worse and, and, and worse. Yeah. And you know, we just want to get in front of the kids. So if you're a parent out there and, and you, I urge you, you know, get get to your principal, get to your teachers, and say, I want my kid educated, and get them in this school. You know, yeah. um, and that's a heartbeat, guys. So we have got some questions out there. Fantastic. Do we have any questions? Well, they're all being answered. So there's some people looking for help, but awesome. the guys are directly over the help lines. Great. Fantastic. That's awesome. Uh, family members or? Um, um, just a couple of guys that are using? currently in, in trapped in. Great. Great. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. The impact of yeah. um, being able to share yeah. from a place of truth and love. Um, you know, we're not the only ones that have been able to come out of that um, entrapment. It is a hell, it is an entrapment. It destroys your family, your future, your life. Um, but we've managed to get out and so we can help you create that pathway, you know. And I can guarantee you feel so much better living life then. That's awesome. What's yeah. the best part of it? Um, you said before well, about I, laughing with your Yeah, and you know what? I wake up every morning now with a spring in my step. Yeah. Um, just excited for the day. Yeah. I'm up at 6.30 every morning, have two cups of coffee, wait for the kids to wake up. Um, and I, I, th I think it's just everything, you know. The other day I was watching the kids play and watching the, the sun shimmer off their hair and I was like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. Yeah, that's it's, awesome. it's, It feels quite spiritual. Yes, yeah. Um, well, you stepped into a new, new yeah. dimension. You know, you've come out of what we call the mm -hmm. kingdom of darkness and you come out into the kingdom mm -hmm. of light. You know, you've got light. Yeah. You know, you've got a reason to live. You yeah. Know? Definitely. Um, and that's, that's awesome. Yeah. That's a, and we want yeah. other people to feel this. You know? Yeah, definitely. I can't explain it. It's, it's just an amazing feeling and, and it's worth it. And I would have never thought I'd be sitting here with you yeah. um, 12 months ago. Yeah. But you don't, you don't, you don't ever, um, you know, think, oh, wait a minute, when I grow up, I want, I want to be a nice addict. You know, yeah. it doesn't work like that. You know, you just don't go, wake up one day and thought, Oh, you know, well, I'm sick of my life right now. You know, I think I'll become an addict. You know, maybe I'll just trash my life. 
Yeah, why not? Yeah, no, we definitely don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, you start, somebody offers you and, and you, you know, contemplate it, or oh, you want to try something and you might embark yeah. on that journey. Um, our message to you guys is not even once, don't touch it, it's not worth it, it's no. going to kill, still and destroy your life and your family's life. Pauline, if you're speaking to somebody that might be contemplating change, have you got any um, contemplating what, sorry? change? Yep. Like they might be using, um, mm. destroying their life and, and they're watching the show right now. Um, mm. Do you have any final, anything that you want to say to them? All you need is that one little bit of desire in your life to want to change. That's all you need to do it. And there is lots of help out there to do it. So if, you, if you've got that little bit of willpower and you've got that feeling, you know, fire in your heart, a bit of desire, um, you're ready. That's yeah. awesome. And you're worth it. You're That's worth the thing, it. you know, you're worth having a better life. Um, and we're here to help you do that. Yeah. And it does get harder before it gets easier. Yep, yep. But um, once you get a little bit of clean time up, um, you know, you start to feel so much better. And I'm only five months um, and I'm starting to feel great. I can't imagine what it's going to be like at 18 months. Yeah. When everything's back to normal properly. That's right. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Look forward to doing the journey with yeah, you, Pauline. And we're really, really blessed to have you part of the Thank team. You. I'm going to teach you a little slogan <laughs> thing that we got going. Okay. Say, I say, okay. Our message out there is not even once, guys. And this is how you do it. Not okay. even. Not even. Once. Once. Guys, good night. Take <laughs> care. God bless. Stay clean. Thanks for joining us, Pauline. Thank you. Can you see yourself? Well done. Awesome. On the right hand side.